They've just given me some perspective there, Tony, because I was moaning about the drive down from Yorkshire last night. <laughs> a bit more goes into it for the likes of Hopi. 37 years of age. He lost 3-0 when he played at the Alexandra Palace. First leg, first leg, Ben to Rufus. That was against Mickey Mansell, a very experienced player, but he's going up against a man who's on the leg side stage for the first time as well, although Ben did play at the 0-2. He lost out to Chris Landman, the Dutchman. Yeah, the good run, Chris Landman's that year. Great Dutch player. It's like starting again for Big Ben here. This is his second Finishing. World Championships, but first at the traditional home of darts. Yeah, and he actually said that when he qualified for the O2, there was part of him that wished he was playing at the lakeside. It's still something that players aspire to, isn't it? Yeah, no, nobody thinks about the prize money or anything else. It's, it's the prestige of, of playing here. Just, just playing here is just amazing. I think too many, I mean, I was guilty of it in my first time. I just wanted, in case it was the one and only time I came here, I stayed all 10, 11 days and really enjoyed every minute of it. Once that was out of the way, then I could start sort of concentrating a bit. I think a lot of players do exactly that. They just think about the occasion and, and actually getting here after after all them years of, of hoping. Yeah, but at heart, those of us, whether we sat in the commentary box or stood playing darts on the stage or, or refereeing, like Anthony Dundas says for this match, we're all darts fans at heart, aren't we? So it's difficult to move, it must be difficult to move into that professional mindset. I'm here to do a job. I mean, I, personally, I came into the game very late. I, was, I think I was 40 when I first appeared here, which obviously uh, I was nearly old enough for the seniors on my first time here. So. I was about to say, Tony, I didn't know it was only five years ago. <laughs> So it's going to take uh, time to adjust. I never remember which, which way coming across the, the planet's easiest, you know, for the uh, to get used to the time zones. I went to uh, Australia in 2005, and uh, it was perfect when I got there. I really enjoyed it. Coming home it was awful. I just couldn't get my bearings for for a week nearly. Yeah, so listening to an interview with a Canadian player, I think it was Rory Hampton who's in the tournament 45. tonight, he said that he's actually missed matches due to being asleep because he's been unable to adjust to the time zone flying over. But both players seemingly asleep, Tony, at the start of this one. Well, again, it's adjusting. It's so important, the first leg. We've, we've said it before, if, if you can nick it, and, uh, that really tickled me about Johnny Haynes there saying if he'd have won the bully, they'd give it away. I mean, that was an old mind trick from Phil Taylor back in the day. And I've heard stories of other players going for double tops when they're going for the bull just to just to try and get in his head for a change. I don't think it worked back in the day, though, did it? I've heard rumours of Taylor. Both players have hit 25 five times. He then hits the ball and then gives it him anyway. Mind games, he was the king, wasn't he? And he learnt off the, the king before him, the deposed king. That's the Bristol. Yeah, all great sort of grace, this great stage. Now Ben Hazel looking to win his first leg on it. Double 12 the target. Double six. Double three. He finds it. Not the best leg in the world, but it only counts for one on the scoring machine. That's all that matters. Was only a hold, though. Yeah, other than that trip to the O2, no real televised darts experience for Ben Hayes. It has appeared at the World Masters a couple of times, but you don't always end up on the TV at the World Masters. 45. Obviously, uh, he's had this ambition forever. All his darting career is to play at the lakeside. I suppose when you start that, you don't ever think you'll actually get there. I know I certainly didn't, but for it actually to happen was just unbelievable. 
yeah, can certainly sense a buzz when you walk through the practice room and the players that are here, many of them here for the first time. Obviously, we've not had so many um, ranking events for the WDF, so I mean, it's sort of a unbalanced the, the field for these events this year. But I'm sure now, well, hopefully we're back to normal, then uh, we'll get a proper ranking system sorted out and maybe... Uh, See more players making the debuts. It's during lockdown, online especially, I don't just mean at the modus. There's been so many online tournaments and, and people have improved, I've noticed that. Just in Stockport, locally, people are improving. Maybe one or two old familiar faces back on the stage as well, Tony. Well, you never know. Might have a go at that calling next. <laughs> or maybe not, you've got to be able to count to do that. <laughs> Well, Puha has managed to make his way down to a finish, as has his opponent, but a much bigger one. So a chance for the New Zealander to level up and give his fans something to shout about. Taking a big, deep breath before taking aim at that double. They're ending off a really nice leg there. Definitely warming into the game. A bit too high. Won't pressure it there. He won't be rushed. He didn't like that. Pulled that a little, stopped and refocused. Game shot the second line. Got her in the end though, that's all that matters. I was just about to ask the question whether the delay on the doubles was actually hindering Hopi rather than helping, but that's an irrelevant question now because it hits the double and levels the match. Yeah, he stopped and refocused, but then missed by probably more than the first time. He got there in the end, that's all that matters. We spoke about the lack of experience for Hazel on the big stage, but as I mentioned at the top of this match, Hopi's played at the PDC World Cup, actually a quarter finalist for New Zealand with Cody Harris back in 2019. And they've beaten Lithuanian and South African teams, which featured the likes of Darius Labanauskas and Devon Peterson en route. Yeah, look, look how their careers have uh, cycled since them days. Shows you get in, in at the ground level and, and, and persevere and practice. And Devon now one of the top players in the world. Absolutely, and on the World Series tour as well, he ran into some of the top players on the world. He didn't win a game. Events down under, but lost to world champions Rob Cross, Gary Anderson, and a lakeside leg legend in Raymond Van Barneveld, who's won the most men's titles here. The pair hitting each other with ton force is just starting to sparkle this one and maybe this is what they needed to bounce off each other 139 see it so often in every single tournament wherever it suddenly starts off not too clever they seem to get lulled into it and as soon as somebody hits it then they both hit it and obviously 139 it was almost a, an exact copy but he opted for the 17 segment Couple of two treble turns for both players. It's two singles to a double, but he's missed the big number. 22. And that could come back to bite Ben Hazel. Sacrilege missing a big number. Especially after scoring as he has. What a great leg up to now. For the break. 20 or 12, leaving 32. And he's got the break. Crossy the leg there. Effectively taking Hopai, control Hopai two, with that break of throw. Hopai Puha. Glorious haircut, isn't it? Game on. Yes. <laughs> he's starting to look a lot more comfortable on the hockey now, Hopai. Yeah, Hazel will feel like he's really missed a trick there because he himself was throwing his best leg of darts and then cost himself a dart at double. Yeah, one clumsy dart. It's 
Seems to have the off, though. 40. And the scoring has certainly sharpened up from the pair of them after a forgivably nervy start to this match. 100. And we've seen other games where one of the players has just not managed to settle at all. I don't think that's the case here already. Well, that's literally every match we've seen today. 140. Well, certainly Paula Jacqueline wasn't allowed to by the brilliance of Rihanna Sullivan in the previous match. And a, a similar story for John Scott, who lost in straight sets to Johnny Haynes, who's on his way to his punk concert now. 100. And it started well for Martin Adams with that 1-2-1 one, one checkout, but not much else went Wolfie's way. Uh, he's irresistible at times, young Joe Cole. 41. Young Joe Cole. <laughs> well, he was, but <laughs> quite a few years ago. <laughs> Jared Cole. I saw him play once in a, a charity darts event as well, Joe. Any good? I think most footballers have got a dartboard in the uh, changing rooms these days. And all the cricketers do. I think it's uh, Leicester's James Madison who is pretty handy with the arrows. He sometimes celebrates by throwing a dart as well. Yeah, I've seen him do it in the, in the pitch. It's a global game now, his dart. 100. You mentioned the online tournaments, it's one of the sports that really managed to survive and in some ways thrive through the, the lockdowns, something that people were able to do at home to keep themselves occupied and maybe we've got a few budding darts in the future that were born out of a horrible situation. Just in this first set, you would think, and another one of them. Dropped a bit low there, could have busted it, still wants tops though. 40. Well, this would hurt. Looking at treble 19 to get two at double 16. And this dart at double from Hazel. Can Puha punish? 20 or the treble. It is the treble for double five. He'll take his time again. Full focus. And he's given a chance back to Hazel. Maybe require 40. I couldn't really call that a marker. Oh, that one. 20. Just didn't look set for any of them darts then. Who oh, you require 5. The hardest bit of this is this single one. But he's managed to find it. And now he wants a double one. A knowing nod from Hazel, and he thought he was going in. Just seemed trying to G himself up there. I mean, shaking your head before you throw the dart. Not a usual tactic. Can't go inside. Has gone inside. And Puha will return to finish off this opening set. Oh, a spell of high scoring. Some great darts, now it's gone a bit scrappy again. Again, it's this single one. Done the hard bit. Three. Three. Oh, my, Chris. Maybe require 20. Looks well, a little bit calmer approaching the hockey this time. And that's the way, Ben. Keep calm and carry on. And we will carry on because it's 2 2. You called it at the start of the match. This would be the tightest of the lot. And the first set is the tightest set we've seen so far today. 60. It was a brave last doubt there. I thought he'd switch downstairs. Not the start he would have wanted, though. We were due a tight game though. 57. Yeah, and again, as we have some Mr. Ben fans in. They do seem to have done what you suggested they might and have gone with each other. One struggles on the doubles, whoever does the same in the same leg. One starts scoring well, the other responds in kind. And it's coming in waves, isn't it, the form? 
the first one to break the mould though and kick on. Well, Hazel has the darts in the decider having broken back and Puha must be feeling hurt having not cleaned up the set in the previous leg having had ample opportunity to do so. Yeah, that can affect your confidence and uh, it's a great last dart from Ben there. That it's almost giving the darts back. It might sound like a strange thing to say, but hitting the treble 20 could have actually contributed to his downfall in the previous day because he hit it to leave double five and then it all went wrong from there, didn't it? Yeah, before before he let that dart go, he's probably thinking big 20 and a shot at the ball. Nice little thing can throw you though. You're going to get frustrated here. It's, you can see it in both of the faces. It's a lonely place upon that hockey when things aren't going. Just looking like a little bit of a slog now. 42. For Puha, who's not managed to find a treble in a dozen darts in this leg. Five set match, you can just write off losing the first set. If you haven't played well, your opponent's not played well, but you nick it or you, whichever, you can get off. You still got four sets to put it right. You make a mess of this first set. It's so tight. Then after that, one hundred and thirty-seven. Well, even he's saying, "Where did that come from?" Finishes, two points in it, but Puha with the first stab. Yeah, ben lost the advantage with throw now, but he's been taken advantage of. 58. 98. Ooh, the double. Ben, you require 154. Pressure on then. Again, it's a bit of a dodgy double for Puha having. Have to faff around on double five, double two, and double one. I just wonder if you might consider splitting. Well, whatever, whatever he had in mind, that, that last treble 18 might have changed it again. I think he is going six. Or he's going 10, double 14. Two at it. One at the worst out on the double. Don't hate that double seven. Just keeps leaving himself every double that he doesn't want to throw at. And that is spelling trouble. And it might be Hazel who's happy at, at the break. Now, Last time he went for a 12, he hit a 9. This time he gets the 12. And he gets the dart to win the set. But it's too high. After we saw on the, uh, the double 5, the single 5, this isn't easy. We talk about all these 180s and, and the big trebles, but these single numbers are the ones that can win your games. Up there again. No score. And he's approaching double figures now in terms of set darts. And Hazel has got three more of his own here. Double top to take the set. Can he use that as a guide? He guides there. And he gives it the big come on. Ben Hazel has turned this set around. It looks like Hopi Puha was going to have it in his years old, a seeded player at Lakeside. Just before we get back into the meat of this one, Tony, a few thoughts on him. Well, he's a county uh, colleague of mine, young Luke. Uh, special talent. I mean, it's hard to believe the, the way he carries himself, the way he acts, the way he acts, it's hard to believe. He is just 15, and that's besides looking at the dartboard. I just mean in, in general life, he's a cracking young man. He's, he's going to be a superstar this game. Well, and, uh, and massive, set, massive future. And if, if he was Rupert. watching that game, I think he'll be a little bit more pleased than he was when he woke up this morning. Absolutely, someone who won't be phased by being a seeded player and a, a favourite, as he will be in the match against whoever wins this one. And as we know in darts, that was, that was a terrible first set. Both will realise that. 
Ben will feel a little bit better because he's got a freebie there. He needs to kick on and uh, get his foot down a bit here. Just for a pair of them, obviously. And they should, should flash us, both of them. Hazel hammered in 3 1 40 in the opening set. And they had 12 tons between them. That was probably during the middle of the set, though. There was, there was a little phase there of, of maybe two legs where they both kicked in and played, scored well anyway. The finishing just, just wasn't there for either player. Yeah, but Puhad, he seemed to keep relieving really tricky shots, didn't he? Kind of a, an example of what you do have to manage the board better because he left double 19, didn't want to go for it. We assume that he went for a six to leave double 16, missed that hit at 10, left double 40, then he's on double seven, then he's on double two and double one. It just kept happening, didn't it? Yeah, just clumsy darts here and there. Like you say, board management is a lot to be. I mean, these guys are normally thinking from sort of 300 down what to be throwing for. But in that first set, it was sort of around the ton and below, they still weren't 100% sure. I'm sure they'll put it right. They've had a little uh, fire break in the back room. 64. You know, it's one of the questions that people ask the most. What do the players do during a break? What were you doing when you walked off stage with your opponent? It's quite a strange because one of you is obviously happier than the other one most of the time. And, and literally, he's, he's two boards over. You can see him practicing again. I didn't really throw that many darts in the back room. I'd, I'd stand at the table and just, you know, things were going well nothing needs to change and sometimes when it's it's not going well there's not a lot you can do about it because you put 100% effort in on the stage you can't put any more effort in than that so it's a difficult one it's starting to go well for Hazel here still on this shot certainly still on now 59. yeah they both just need a couple of them to go in just to, just to boost the confidence a bit because they get down to these finishes and just they don't feel they're not settling at all. Well, even if he hits two trebles here, he's going to leave double 19. And that look said it all, to be honest. <laughs> Doesn't fancy it. Don't think he likes the lie of that dart. And yeah, you can just see it's clattered off it and gone below the treble. Yeah, 78 going. Treble 18 was the shot. Ben players just need a couple of clean finishes just to a bit of confidence it's not happening well that is a happy accident really unless his opponent goes out of course 60 can be a, a tricky shot because the first start can often block the bed well, to be honest it looked like that happened and, uh, double 10 struggling on the outer ring and it looks like his hopes are fading here at the lakeside Hazel will have to shuffle across slightly but he could actually use that dart as a barrier well I don't know what he's going to do now well, he's, he's coming across the other side it's an exhibition shot this Probably from 10 feet that dart. Back in the day, in, in the old system, the pin scoring system, where he used to light up the boards on the side, there'd have been a, a fellow in a box there where he'd, he'd have thrown over his head. I remember there used to be an argument for a curved ducky, because obviously when you move across in a straight line, you're throwing from further away. I mean, obviously, I've, I've, I've probably said this on air before, but I worked for Alan Evans for a long time, and he used to carry a piece of string with him, which was the exact measurement because he used to put his toes around the side and people used to call him a tree. And he did exactly that. He, he did a line with this um, string. He said, that's where the measurement is. And he was quite right. 57. Of course, now the hockeys are a bit wider. Yeah. I wonder what our referee, Anthony Dundas, would have done at Hazel. Whipped a piece of string out of his pocket there and started moving towards the board. Some Andreas Harrison fans in. 
Dirty Harrison in action next against Laszlo Kadar. 42. It's a beard to behold, isn't it? <laughs> There's a few beards to be feared amongst them guys. another mid-set surge from the pair of them, a 140 from Puha. 70. Consulate look there on Big Ben coming. 90. It's a lonely place up there, it just won't go, no matter what you try, no matter what, what is in your head, what you're thinking. If they're not going, they're not going, and, and sometimes there's not. You just want to get off the stage. Yeah, he's wearing his emotions on his face, isn't he? Yeah. Well, buying this. Don't need to guess. But he's feeling disappointed, <laughs> but he's still got every chance. However, I think this is the must-win leg. Fifty-one. So Sixty again. The 17s. They use the 25 or the ball. They then go upstairs for a nice clean setup shot. 62. Oh, 60. Like said Chris Poor really needs this. Just a touch lower this first dart. Starting disappointment on hold for now. And he does have the darts in leg three, cancelling out that break of throw. Maybe, just maybe, he can start to feel a little bit more confident. In some of these games like this, you just need a bit of success somewhere, something good to happen. And believe it or not, just one double could change things. He's got to be positive now, though. Positive starts. Positive darts from Puha, who had been Puha up to now. And he does have success. He's won 18 ranking titles down under on the DPA and DPNZ circuit. Then again, 15. even Paul Nicholson's won a few of those. <laughs> that wouldn't be in the last five or six years, though, would it? I mean, uh, it's getting tougher everywhere throughout the world. He's, uh, his ranking systems are so tough. Some of the best example is uh, Damon Hetcher that's come over here, absolutely ripping trees up everywhere he plays. Yeah, of course, Simon Whitlock, a former finalist on this stage, hit a nine darter yesterday in a Pro Tour event. Is it 10 in his career now? Still waiting. We've been waiting 32 years for somebody to do what Paul Lim did here at the lakeside. Yeah, been a few squeaks. Adams had a shot at it a couple of years ago. Very unlucky. So. 108, another one, well a single 19 rather, again the big pause, will it be followed by the big applause? 76. Well you would think this isn't going to go the way they've been finishing. Well he made your point rather emphatically there. It hasn't really taken much out of that. Hope I will be feeling much happier. Thirteen. 
just again trying to read the body language of the players. It's now Hazel whose shoulders have slumped. 97. The cheeks are flushed a bit there as well. I've been there, I felt it. Sometimes if it's not going, you feel a bit embarrassed. It's exactly what that first was then. And the harder he tries, sometimes the worse it can get. Very, very different picture on the face of the man approaching the hockey now was giving himself a bit of a talking to, ready to get going again. It's been much more neat and tidy in the last couple of legs. 140. Returns a tidy score there. It's actually got a really nice action. It's uh, metronomic. Trying to use that dart below the bed. Often you would switch, but he thought he could clatter one in off it. Switches with the last one. Him, but he's just got to get in his head that if he loses this set, it's only one all. He's still in there, he's still got a chance. Yeah, we've been talking about players turning up and trying to enjoy it. Well, to be honest, neither of these men really look like they're enjoying themselves in this match. Both of them at times stomping around the stage, sulking a little bit. And you're right, they're right in the meat of the match here. There's nothing is won or lost yet. Exactly. Well, I'm just just think, thinking about the game still. Make sure we have to finish, you never know. Well, that's tricky. There is another option here. Could go for the treble 18. Not many players utilise that shot. Maybe because Hazel is on such a big finish, he felt like staying there. And he will come back with three darts in hand to wrap up the set and level the match. Yeah, he's probably confident when he looks at the score then. Ben still wanting one six four. He's confident he'd be back. He's got to prove he was right to level the match. Markers. Well, perhaps overthought it a little bit. And now Hazel can level the set, and that's how quickly it can change. He'll stay there to get a dart at the same double, but couldn't hunt down the treble. He's tidied it up well, but will he get a shot again? I hope I will hope to see this fly straight in the double six because he doesn't want to get back to the habits of earlier in the match and it has gone straight in and Puha does take the second set squares up this match and for the first time at the 2022 Lakeside World Championship we have a deciding set it's almost as if you knew what you were talking about Tony when you called it at the start of this match you know, I heard Paul say it earlier <laughs> but there's no celebration or anything there from Puha you can, you can sense that he's not happy, even though he's just won a set. He should be ecstatic. He just doesn't have the feeling that things are going to improve. He knows there's going to be a battle now for the next five legs. Yeah, it really has been a fight. Now we're about to see the first maximum. There is the answer. It's better late than never, Chris. confirmation that 405 remaining for Puha after that first visit. 81. And again the demeanour changes. 
Ben Hazel, who truth looked like hope in the previous set, but has just hit the reset button for the last set. Fired in the first maximum of the match, and he's taking the game to his opponent. His first little smile there as well. He's loving life for the lake side, finally. He'll be loving life if he takes this out, which he might. Treble 19. Well, he's going to leave it nice and handy. 97. To be honest, during the previous two sets, they've been nice and handy on quite a few occasions and uh, never panned out that way. 60. Let's see if he can get rid of that kind of habit. Double top. One high, but one in. And one up. In the third and final set of this first round tie. The winner remembered to take on the 15-year-old sensation Luke Littler in round two. We've already had sensation here at the lakeside as Jared Cole stunned Martin Adams in the opening match of the tournament. Johnny Haynes then beat John Scott and Rihanna O'Sullivan got the women's tournament underway with a well-earned win against Paula Jacqueline. The most uh, impressive win of the day, that to be honest, we have. Great to see her back. Yeah, and she's got an incredible record here at the lakeside. It is quite astonishing. 133. Reaching two finals. And just three visits here before. She's definitely a contender. And I actually think in the women's tournament it's slightly easier to pick who are the contenders I'm not quite sure to be honest in the men's tournament you know, people are talking about the likes of Connor Scott and some people even think that Luke Littler could go all the way but people were talking about Martin Adams and he's already gone yeah 59 and some of the form he showed in the last few months and you know quite rightly people were talking about him winning it Put the nine darters down at Modus League and uh, the time during that them weeks where he hit the nine darts, that he could have had others as well. He was just phenomenal. Yeah, Adam's one of the players that used that live league to prepare for this tournament. Didn't go the way he wanted, but Johnny Haynes certainly seemed to do the trick. I know that Makuru Suzuki was down there playing in that last week. Yeah, a couple of brilliant victories this week. But I'd be surprised, if, if I'm honest, if, if the winner didn't come from somebody who'd been doing well. Then. Mike Warburton and James Richardson are two of my uh, well, pre-tournament fancy players, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them went ahead and won it. Some smashing, smashing averages. 14. Something that's certainly replicatable in the first matches, at least, with such a short format here. Well, Puha has worked his way down to 113 in a laboured leg. Puha, you require 113. It's a match that really needs something to... 81. Spark. Spark the occasion, and this could be it. Second time he's drifted to the left, going for the ball. 48. That could be tricky. Had to move across a little bit. You see the dart there, just blocking the double above it. People like the split from 16s to 8s, but that can cause a problem, did for Puha there. And now Hazel 
He's looking to bed the ball. Well, this time he drifts right. Well, right. Well, bring it all level. Three clear darts at number four. Double 16 for Ben Hazel to take a stride towards the second round. He hasn't blocked the double eight. He's found the double eight and he finds himself 2 0 up in the final sets. 2 0 up and it's his dance. The happy Hazel, look at him. Grinning like a Cheshire cat. Why wouldn't you be? The darts like this. 140. You can see in his first day, he probably thought, today is definitely my day. It's not been good, it's not been pretty. Winning is all that matters. First round games, winning is all that matters. 29. Too closely fought sets, but this one looks like Hazel might breeze through it, looking really comfortable now, and Puha looking anything but. Obviously, the most important leg of the match so far will probably be the last one. He's done it in regulation darts, a nice one for a nice ton. Yeah. I'll back that up now. 29 and 59. All that his opponent's able to muster up with his first two visits. He may not get many more visits. Even Hazel can afford to see the funny side. He might now produce a showpiece checkout. The ball to win in style. 130. In a lovely way to finish the match. Yes, he's showing us how far away from the ball. Well, he was far away from the ball, but he's not far away from the finish line now. 97. 29 remaining. Double 10. 11. He's not making it easy for himself. Any sort of score here from Puha, and uh, the pressure's on again. Yeah, and there were other options there as well. If he goes inside on double ten when he comes back, then he could start to get into a sticky situation. Obviously, it was just that clumsy dart. He's aiming for 15 double eight. 79. If he wanted double eight, he could have gone for 13, couldn't he? Exactly. Yeah. He knows better than us what he likes, but he has gone inside. He can't come inside on that. But he hasn't. Hazel hits. Hazel wins. And Puha's hopes disappear on his debut at the Lakes.